I call this one the Drake L7 is a little weird part one um, going at the top I got um, two Drake 7 L7's in um, basically a, a updated Drake L4B and uh, the only real difference well there's a few differences but the um, main difference is um, the L7 has 160 meters where the uh, L4 was uh, 10 through 80 meters you know the L7 is prettier it's got lights and stuff and um, also though the uh, Drake L7 is fan cooled with the fan there and the L4V is forced air cooled with a blower and chimneys so the L7 is a little bit of a cheaper box than the L4 because of the um, fan cooling I think other than that it's pretty similar I'll do a comparison of the uh, L4 and the L7 you know coming up and they both use the exact same separate power supply you know same transformer same uh, connections and same parts pin for pin so the L7 is pretty close and you can see it's a very well built amp um, the L7 RF deck is a little bit smaller than the L4 and they cramped uh, a lot of stuff in there especially the tank circuit um, you know here and you know to get a, a 160 meters out of it they had to cram in a lot of coil and you know the Drake L4 already had a lot of tune and load but they needed even more for the L7 and the L7 like I said it's a little weird they did a couple weird things that at first I didn't even know what they were doing you know I'm like what is that and how are they doing that I've never seen that before and one of them is this this part here that was a factory part in this amplifier here and where that originally goes is this is that same part wired into this L7 this one isn't blown up and I'm like what the heck is that you know um, it's on the plate choke and it goes from the top of the plate choke there to that center of the plate choke and I've never seen you know something attached to the plate choke like that you know um, I've talked about you know blocking caps at the top and by the way these are not only unpowered they don't even have a power supply hooked up to them so there's nothing that's gonna get me unplugged in I'm no power supply hooked up and that's why I'm comfortable sticking my fingers in there right don't do this at home 3,000 volts will kill you not not mess you up it will kill you so anyway I was like what the heck is that thing you know normally um, you know you have your plate choke you have the blocking caps that lets the RF go out you know uh, to your output circuit but keeps the DC from going across there that's normal you know normal looking choke itself is kind of like a two stage kind of divided in half but this thing here which is that taken out of the other one that blew up I was like what's that never seen that before you know same cops down here it uses two to stop the RF that makes it past this choke that blocks it so if a little bit more uh, comes down these caps ground it out and then even more same thing this um, coil here just blocks even more RF and then another choke over here I mean uh, another capacitor over here to short out even more so it's basically a lot of stuff to make sure that the RF doesn't go back down you know that line there and then on the other side of that is where the um, high voltage comes into the um, RF deck from the power supply um, that there is a um, shorting doggone it I'm tongue tied I forgot the name of this and I don't feel like stopping the video but um, crowbar um, if you don't have the lid on this amp and you keep this circuit intact 
it will short out the high voltage completely so it's you know trying to make this d amp dummy proof where you don't have a lid on it you fire it up and you don't address that um, crowbar switch there it's gonna take that high voltage coming in I was talking about and short it right out um, another thing that keeps you from killing yourself but anyway I didn't want to get into too much theory I was like what the hell is that and um, basically I looked it up on the net and I saw a few videos on the net and I also got a schematic for it I didn't have one at first but I was like I saw that weird part and I wanted a schematic so I found a schematic online and that is a 47 pico fed per red capacitor that's all that is and I'm like that is one of the weirdest capacitor if not the weirdest I've ever seen in my life and then I'm like and I don't know the answer to this why do they have a 47 pico for red capacitor you know hooked from the um, top of the choke to the center of the choke and that's engaged at all times you know that's soldered in there and I saw on the net that that thing fails often and you think you know that's the one that was out of this one this one here you know I bought these two as is um, but they look pretty good I think you know but this was in there and that was where this um, doorknob is mounted now right so this is a 47 picofarad capacitor and on the net they say it blows quite often and as you can see mine was burned up on this one so uh, it was recommended on the net and I think it's a good idea that's why I did it where I just replaced it with a uh, 5 kilovolt doorknob 50 picofarad capacitor so hopefully um, you know 50 pico threads 47 I should be good enough and um, by the way here's the original parasitics heavy duty and then with this one here that's not blown up look at this dinky wire and little tiny wires that you know somebody used for the parasitic that's very small wires for this type of output amp and um, those blue resistors I think they hit an M on there well, I can see it better not blowing it up with the camera than I could with my eyeball. But anyway, I haven't looked them up yet. I don't know if they're wire round. They don't look like they are, but if they're wire, never use wire rounds, wire wound resistors for parasitic because the resistor itself will act like a choke and um, you got the parasitic choke there and you just, just don't want to have um, all that choke going on. You want a non wire round resistor for your parasitic but that's not the only thing weird about this um, amplifier I was like well here goes another one of those weird things you know that uh, uh, connected to the tune uh, capacitor I'm like you know that's where it's connected that's where it's connected and then it's got a wire connected to it I'm like what is that and that just looks like a bigger version of this um, capacitor here. And to come to find out, that is exactly what that is. That is a capacitor. I don't know the rating on it or anything yet. But I do know by looking at the schematics and all this, this wire here goes to the band switch. And in 160 meters it um, puts a ground on this wire so what happens is this capacitor is really not in circuit because it's not grounded you know um, electricity to flow you need a you know positive and a negative um, and over here you got the positive or you're connected to the RF but when that's open you know and all the other bands is up 160 this capacitor is basically not in circuit so it grounds it so you can have extra capacitance for this um, variable tune cap when you're on 160 meters and you know I've explained before that as you go um, up the band you need more and more and more and more capacitance like basically um, if you've seen 10 meter only or mono banded amps basically like from from the beginning you might need about that much capacitance you would not need all the rest of this that's for the other bands same with the coil which is another weird thing about this amplifier is 
that the tank coil, at least this part here, is tapped in the center, or almost the center. You know, it comes out the tubes, the blocking cap, and you know, here's your um, tank coil. But you got a couple turns, and then that's where the tune cap is hooked up. On every normal amp I've ever seen, you hook the um, tune capacitor straight to, you know, um, the beginning of your tank coil. So you, it would be hooked over here. You wouldn't have a couple turns first and then a few more turns out. And by the way, this is where the uh, 10 meter tap is right here that goes to the band switch. So for 10 meters, you know, if we're going to include that, which I don't, I'm not even sure what that circuit is yet. I got to do a little bit more research, but you know, for 10 meters, it's just using this and then all this other coil and that coil too are for the rest of the um, bands, you know, 15 through 160 meters. But if we wanted to mono band this, this is all we would need. We would need one with the same voltage or more, but um, probably about a quarter of this capacitor here. And then that's your load over here, the same thing. If we hit mono band it, you know, we could leave that in there, but you basically only need about 25% uh, of the capacitance of that capacitor if you mono band it. So, you know, again, that weird capacitor that they switch in and they got the um, um, the choke or the tank coil, not choke, but tank coil almost center tapped at least, you know, um, when it comes to this part of the coil. So a couple turns then the um, tune capacitor and then a few more turns and the rest of the turns and stuff hooked to the band switch and it switches a few more capacitors in as it goes up the band because even as big as those are the tune and load capacitor you need more for 160 meters and I got it yellowed here in the schematic basically the stuff I went through today this is the plate choke I was talking about and what's that C41 that 47 pico for red capacitor I don't even know where I put the darn thing now oh here we go C41 that 47 pico for red capacitor is actually that that piece right now and if you have an L7 you know from the net they say that blows and obviously you can see mine was blowed so replace that which is mounted right there that's an original factory mount right there and I just put in a um, 50 pico for red um, doorknob you know right there for that so that's that in the schematic here's the blocking caps and then that's the coil I was talking about where it's mounted in the center again you know that's that first coil and I got marked there 10 for 10 meters um, and it's tapped at the center and this tap goes over here to your um, plate or plate tune or tune uh, variable over here and what I got uh, yellowed here is that big flat capacitor that big green thing is what C42 and I said it went to the band switch and it switched in to ground when you're on 160 meters so it's adding you know more capacitance because as you go up the band you need more so that's the weird stuff on the um, output side of this amplifier and I guess I'll just do another one for the input side. Oh, and, and one more thing, even though both of mine had 10 meters in them already, at least for the most part, it's gonna go over through this right quick. If it's been set for 10 meters, this band switch a slide over to that position. If it slides to that position, um, at least on the output side, you're already set for 10 meters. There's a block, like a little nut, that's connected to the band switch that blocks it. 
to keep the band switch from going over the 10 meters. And since mine was already off, I don't even know where that is. They say it's hard to get to underneath. But anyway, uh, if you can go over here, you got 10 meters. And that um, 10 meter coil is already there. It's already connected. On the output side, you don't need to do anything else but make sure you remove that block or that nut from um, keeping it from um, going over here. And that's your 10 meter position. So anyway, that's going to be it for that one. Um, just the Drake L7 is weird, and that was just the um, output side. Coming up soon, we will go through the input, and then a, a little later, we're going to um, fire it up and uh, show you what she's doing. All right, Drake L7, um, what they call it, wide range linear amplifier. I guess they call it wide range because it's got 160 meters in it and you know we kind of went through that at least on the output side of it all right coming up in a few uh keep an eye out for the input that's it for this one bye